Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams, and welcome back to Tutorial 2. This is Prop Scale Model Building Club. My name is Joel Z. Williams. Uh, I'll be going over some of the things that I forgot to talk about last session. Uh, we were talking about the basic tools that you need to begin in your hobby of scale aircraft model building, and there were a few things that were I conspicuously left out, and I thought I should address them here. Um, I, I brought this to demonstrate an example of a, a hobby knife that I see a lot of people using and I wanted to show you this as an example of what not to buy. These things are inherently um, more clunky and, and just, uh, uh, although they're more ex inexpensive than an X-Acto knife, they are not a uh, suitable substitute. So if you can't afford to uh, buy an X-Acto knife over a razor knife, I suggest you do that. Uh, I also didn't talk about the forceps. Um, these are Abbey forceps, um, very cheap at, at uh, I think I got these at Harbor Freight Tools. Um, what these will allow you to do is, of course, is hold parts and keep them clamped as you're working on them. Very um, helpful for that uh, purpose. The, the only knock is that they have uh, this particular pair has uh, grips in here, has ridges. Um, often I will take some masking tape and, and tape that up um, before I use it so it won't scar, score the plastic that I'm working on. Okay, so I didn't talk about that. I also didn't talk about the, the um, aerosol paint cans. Now, um, the reason I left it to this conversation is because this is assuming you have decided to stay in this hobby, that you, you have made up your mind that this is something that you're going to do and you're going to go ahead and invest um, in, in this type of hobby. So this is what you would, be, you would use if you were a beginner. Um, you, you could buy this paint and, and use it pretty well, to, just like you would imagine, to spray paint the larger parts of, of the aircraft model. And if you don't have a, a paintbrush or airbrush, this is this is a suitable substitute. This will get you through and it looks a lot better than painting with a brush. <clears throat> so these are just two different brands. This is a, a Tester's brand. This is a Tamiya brand. They're roughly equivalent in, in terms of price, but I find the um, Tamiya color to be a little bit runny, a little bit more uh, viscous, so it, it uh, has the potential to run on you a little bit faster than the Tester's brand. So those are the two items that I didn't talk about yesterday and I thought I should go ahead and bring that up. Now, um, now that we have introduced your basic workbench setup, I want to go ahead and talk about things that you can get when you move to the next level. Now, assuming that you are going to take this hobby to the next level and you're going to uh, get serious about it and go ahead and move into that category, I recommend one of these carousel um, equipment holders from testers. Uh, I like it because it makes it really easy to find my paint and I don't have to move around a lot. Uh, it's a very cool thing to have. Of course you can see over here these are a good, good place to store your paint brushes to make them easy to access, very handy. Um, this is Micro Mask. This is a product that uh, I should have talked about yesterday but it just didn't have time. It's made by the same company, Microscale, that make, makes the decal uh, adhesive that I was talking about yesterday. Micromass is good because it's, it's like a, uh, I guess the best way to explain it would be to show you how vi viscous it is. You can see that it's, it's a very thick, uh, has a, almost like a coagulant uh, effect. But what it does is when you put it on top of um, windshields, for example, canopies, uh, and allow it to dry, it creates a mask and, and it's very good for getting in those nooks and crannies where you can't really set tape in, into those, cre those crevices really well. Uh, and then it peels off really easy. So uh, think of it as a film, almost like a, uh, uh, almost like a scum that would be on top of a, a pudding, um, it, uh, but, but firmer and certainly more uh, resilient. Good. It'll, it'll keep the paint off of the areas that you want and it'll go into those very hard to reach spaces. Um, color pins. Now these <clears throat> I really recommend if you're going to go ahead and move into that next level. Um, these can save you a lot. This particular color is black. These paint pins can save you a lot of time. You can get them 
uh, fairly cheaply. I think two or three dollars for for these type of pens. And um, for colors that you're not going to use a lot, this is a flesh color pen. Um, for example, if you're painting the face of a pilot or or uh, maybe hands of a of a soldier uh, in, a, in a tank, um, that's they're extremely handy. And um, you can even get the, the fine, this is a fine one for uh, Gundam markers, but they make a very fine black line. That's, these are exceptionally handy and, and almost indispensable when you're talking about moving them to that second level. Okay, if you're going to go ahead and, and make this a hobby that you're going to do for some time, I recommend that you go ahead and get one uh, a uh, rotary tool such as this one. I think I paid seven or eight dollars for this from Harbor Freight Tools, and it comes with a kit of, of a whole bunch of accessories. And, and essentially, all it is is a small drill motor where you can interchange uh, several parts. You know, there's a lot of stuff. Um, I think more than anything, you're probably going to be using these grinding wheels to to make um, surfaces uh, meld better. Let's see if I can open it. You open that chuck key, put that bit in there, and uh, tighten it down. <clears throat> now, safety is a concern always, so if you're ever using some of these tools, you should uh, obey the warnings on the labels and use appropriate uh, eye protection, hearing protection. Uh, always want to be safe in your, in your work environment. Make sure you get that chuck down tight. You don't want that thing spinning off. Okay, and as you can see, it's got a lot of rotation on it. Uh, very, very good for grinding down parts really quickly. If you're if you're trying to polish something up, it, it can help as well. A uh, very useful tool. Something that for eight for eight or ten dollars, you can't really beat it. So I would recommend going ahead and get that. And it comes. These kits always come with with accessories that you'll never use. There, there's some. Um, uh, there's a wire brush. Here's a some cutting wheels, I believe. Um, and I will probably never have occasion to use those, but uh, for ten bucks you can't beat it, and you might as well have it because you're going to do you're going to need these things for for other um, projects. You can use them for stuff that you're not modeling. Um, here's another uh, handy accessory. These are the uh, sanding disc wheels, or I should say sanding wheels. Uh, very good, very coarse, very good for removing uh, hard edges and seams. You can even use uh, this device is a small pin vise, uh, and as in lieu of a pin vise, if you need to drill small holes, there are uh, uh, small drill bits included in the in the um, accessory pack. So this, of course, is not for the person who is just going to dabble one with one or two models and and leave it alone. I, I wouldn't um, recommend that you spend the, the the money. But if you if you are going to stay in this, this hobby for any time. Go ahead and invest in something like this. See if you, you you might not use it a lot on on every model, but you'll find over the course of several models that you it will save you a lot of work. So those are the items that I, fought, I failed to talk to you about yesterday. And while I have a few more minutes on the clock, I might as well go ahead and move on to the next uh, topic. Now, people jump into this hobby and for some reason they go out and buy the most intricate model they can find and are frustrated when they run into difficulty putting it together. It, it turns out to be more than they had anticipated. And for that reason, I recommend that you go out and you buy a model such as this. Uh, Revel makes a good model for uh, Corsair. And they have this rated at skill level two, but I would venture to say that it's even easier than than that. Um, as you can see, there, a lot of the, the fuselage is all one component. Um, this is a model with very few pieces compared to uh, something. Uh, I'll show you a, a version of the same aircraft, um, but a, a much more difficult build. <clears throat> this is the Tamiya version of the, the same uh, F4, well a little bit earlier version of the, the 1A. Um, but if you look at the difference here, a lot more parts, a lot more components. And more parts equals more opportunity f for things to go wrong. More opportunity for you to get um, frustrated 
and and put your pain away and never come back to the craft. So I don't advise something like this for for first timers. If you're if you're uh, maybe teaching your grandson or or uh, maybe just yourself getting back into the craft, uh, crawl before you walk. Take something easy. Um, this kit is cheap too. I think it's only about eleven dollars. 11 or 12 dollars at Walmart and one of the things that I recommend and people always blast me on this whenever I give this advice if it's only ten dollars go ahead and buy two go ahead and buy two kits and that way if something goes wrong on uh, when you're applying your de your decals or, or uh, heaven forbid you you glue something and uh, you glue it crooked and, and you have to take it apart and it leaves a lot of jagged edges heaven forbid that you uh, crack a propeller or uh, lose a part while, you, while you're working on it heaven forbid you can always start over and you can cannibalize uh, from the other kit you can use those parts uh, inter interchangeably as long as you have the same model and same manufacturer. So those are the tips that I want to give on this lecture. Um, thank you for coming back. This is the second tutorial, beginning stage modeling. Uh, in our next conversation, we're going to talk about air compressors and paint brushes. And um, for if you're interested in moving on to that level, um, stick with us and we'll get you all the information you need. This is Props Scale Model Aircraft Building Club. My name is Joel Z. Williams, and I am the Prop Master.